Good morning and welcome to the Kansas Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admission Officers Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. Just a couple of housekeeping announcements before we get started. Uh, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type uh, questions to any of our presenters at any time. Also, your camera and your microphone are turned off, so this Q&A button is the only way you have to interact with our panelists. And don't be shy, we love to hear from you and answer your questions. So things you're wondering about specific colleges, about the college application, um, really anything related to college admission is fair game here. So do ask those questions. Also, this is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions to hear from more colleges. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available, um, should be within a week at strivescan.com slash Kansas, same place where you can register for other presentations. So now I'd like to ask all of our presenters um, if they could uh, turn off their cameras and mute themselves. And our first presenter will be from the Missouri University of Science and Technology. Take it away. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Wendy Elo, and I'm a senior admissions counselor at Missouri University of Science and Technology, also known as Missouri s and uh, So we will jump right in. Uh, one of the questions we get asked the most is where is Missouri s and located? Uh, we're about halfway between St. Louis, Missouri and Springfield, Missouri, um, about an hour and a half away from each, and we're about three and a half hours away from Kansas City. Uh, we are a small city with a population just over 20,000 people in the city limits, uh, plus nearly 8,000 students and another 50,000 people coming from nearby communities for shopping, dining, and entertainment. Uh, Rolla is part of the South Central Ozark Highlands, so you will find many lakes, rivers, streams where people enjoy fishing, swimming, canoeing, uh, all sorts of outdoors activities. Uh, Rolla has a nice balance of urban development with small town charm, so you will find everything that you need here. Missouri s and was founded in 1870 as one of the first technological universities west of the Mississippi. Uh, some of our rankings that we do like to talk about, we are ranked the number one public engineering university in the nation by payscale.com. We're also the number one university in Missouri for alumni salary potential, uh, number one public university in Missouri, uh, and our graduates have the best starting salary among all public colleges and universities in Missouri. Uh, we're also ranked number eight in the nation among all colleges and universities for annual return on investment. Another really interesting ranking that we're proud of is from the National Campus Safety Summit, where we were named the 20th safest campus in the nation. So now I'll talk about some of our degree, degree programs. Uh, in the fall of 2020, we had uh, just under 8,000 students from across the United States and around the world who chose to study at Missouri s and uh, We offer 99 different degree programs in 40 areas of study. Uh, we have two colleges. Uh, the first one I'll talk about is the College of Arts, Science, and Business, where we have the sciences like biology, chemistry, physics, uh, humanities and the liberal arts, and AACSB accredited undergraduate business program. We have teacher certification, as well as pre-professional programs, such as pre-med, pre-vet, pre-law, things like that. Uh, however, Missouri s and is best known for our engineering programs, with about 75% of our students majoring in these degrees. Uh, in the College of Engineering and Computing, we have 15 different undergraduate engineering majors, uh, as well as computer science and geology and geophysics. Uh, we also introduced a new global engineering program last fall, where in the span of five years, students can earn two bachelor's degrees one in an engineering field of their choice, and the other is in a bachelor's in inter interdisciplinary studies with a minor in Spanish or French. Uh, these students will study abroad for one semester and have an engineering internship abroad another semester. Uh, some people are wondering what is there to do at Missouri s and besides study? Uh, well, we have over 250 clubs and organizations. Uh, we have 19 different design teams that give students the opportunity to develop their problem solving skills, teamwork, and business skills um, while designing and building race cars, robots, battle bots, rockets, canoes, rovers, and more. 
Uh, we also have 15 NCAA Division II varsity athletic teams, as well as intramural and club sports. Uh, about 23% of our students participate in Greek life, and we also have a very active theater, band, orchestra, um, and study abroad programs and much more. Uh, with our students, uh, we have two career fairs each year, which are among the largest in the Midwest. Uh, last year, over 4,000 different employers actively recruited s and students at career fairs, on-campus events, and online through our job portal. Uh, the average starting salary for students graduating with a bachelor's degrees is just over $67,000, and students doing internships and co-ops earn an average of over $3,000 a month. Uh, and our students go to work for large companies such as Google, Microsoft, SpaceX, Boeing, Amazon, etc. So if you are interested in uh, attending Missouri s and we are still ap accepting applications for fall 2021 uh, if you're a senior right now. Um, and uh, if you are a younger student, uh, the application will be open sometime during the summer between your junior and senior year. Uh, you can apply free on our, on our website or on the Common app, and we are currently test optional for this year and for next year. Uh, some of the scholarships that I do like to talk about uh, are most prestigious scholarship for out-of-state students is our Distinguished Scholars Award. It's a competitive scholarship worth $30,000 a year, renewable for four years. Uh, to qualify, you have to have a minimum cumulative GPA of 3.75 and an ACT of 29. Uh, this is a competitive scholarship that will have essays and interviews that go along with it. Another scholarship that we have exclusively for Kansas students is our Kansas Connection Award. Uh, this covers 100% of the difference between in-state and out-of-state tuition. And based on your ACT or SAT scores, uh, you can also qualify for our Kansas Connection Connection Extra Award. Uh, both of these scholarships are renewable for four years uh, with a cumul cumulative GPA of 3.0. Uh, in addition, we have additional scholarships you can apply for uh, after you've been admitted, which can increase your total scholarship total by several thousands of dollars. Uh, so if you are interested in attending Missouri s and or want more information, here is our contact information. Um, and uh, please reach out to us for a visit or any questions that you might have. Thank you so much, Wendy. And next, we will hear from Highland Community College. Unmute myself. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Taylor Merritt. I'm the admissions representative for Highland Community College. Um, so we are a community college, which means we are a two-year um, institution where students will kind of come and get started, um, get their prerequisites out of the way and earn their associate's degree um, to then transfer on to a four-year um, or even some decide to go um, straight into the workforce. So um, we are located, oh, oh gosh, there we go. Uh, we are located in the upper Northeast corner of Kansas. Um, but we do have some other locations as well, all in Kansas. So you can see here on this map um, where some of our other locations are. So if you are um, someone currently here in Kansas in the Northeast corner, um, you might have already heard of some of these, um, but we do of course have our face-to-face -face instruction, um, technical programs online, and then we have um, the option of hybrid, which is um, both online and face-to-face. All right, so Highland by the numbers. Um, so you can see here, this map just shows um, where all of our alum are from. So you can see almost every state in the um, United States has um, alums from Highland Community College. We were founded in 1858 um, as the first college in Kansas. So we are very proud of that, um, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, but our average class size is 14 students. Um, our student to teacher ratio is 10 to one. So we do pride ourselves um, because we are smaller, our students typically have um, more of a one-on-one -on -one, um, with their, their teachers. Um, they really get to know them, um, which then of course is just beneficial to them um, to have some more help um, as well as 80% of our students um, do have a scholarship. And I will talk about our scholarships here in just a little bit. Um, so keep that in mind as well. 
All right, so our annual cost comparison. Um, so not to take away from any of these wonderful universities, um, but it does of course just compare a two-year institution, um, some money saving that can happen um, by starting here. So um, I personally am an alum of Highland, so I started here um, as well, and then I did transfer on to a four year. So it was a great place for me to start um, to save some money, um, to continue to be involved in athletics, um, and then just get those classes out of the way before I transferred on um, to a university. Here's another chart just showing um, what our tuition and fees are. So we do not have in state or out of state tuition for any student. So all of our students. Um, do pay the same rate here on our main campus in Highland. So you can see on this chart, um, tuition for us is $55 per credit hour. Um, fees are $50 per credit hour. So that gives us a total of $105 for that tuition and fees. So I talked about our scholarship areas and how 80% of our students do have a scholarship. So our academic scholarships, you can see um, listed over here on the left. Um, these are some of the study areas that students will choose to have a scholarship in. Um, this doesn't mean that this is um, the only options that we have here at Highland, uh, but this is what we have our scholarship areas in. So um, you can see it ranges from agriculture. Uh, we are, of course, a very rural community here, um, but we also have our math science scholarship um, that covers a lot of our students who are going into engineering, um, nursing, pre-med, any of those options um, we have for scholarships as well. Um, these scholarships do cover the entire cost of tuition and books. Um, so we really encourage our students um, to start with one of these scholarships. Um, our deadline for these scholarships is June 1. So we still have plenty of time um, to get that. And of course, you're welcome. If you have some more questions specifically on any of these scholarships, please feel free to write that in the Q&A box for me. Um, we also have athletic scholarships um, and these can range on how much money, of course, is given. Um, we are in the Jayhawk Conference, so it is a very competitive conference for our athletes. Um, our football team actually just had their first game um, this past Sunday, so we got the win. So it's been very exciting, though. Um, a lot of our athletics have um, been pushed to this spring, so it's been great to see um, all of the hard work our athletes have been putting in um, has kindly finally come to fruition. So we're just so happy for them, too, um, because of all of that um, hard work. So. Um, you can also see we did um, have foundation scholarships, which is money given to us um, by generous donors. Um, that deadline was February 15th, and we have awarded students um, that money. Um, but we also, for any of our returning students, um, we offer those scholarships as well. So if you are someone planning to come to Highland, um, just keep that in mind for next year as well. You can apply for those foundation scholarships. Um, we also, of course, have financial aid for students, and that is um, still open. Um, so if you have not completed the FAFSA, um, you still have time to do that. All right, so I did touch on our athletics. Um, just again, um, these are the different um, athletics that we have here at Highland, um, women's soccer. Um, this is our first year for having women's soccer. Um, we just got a brand new um, track and field and soccer facility this year. Um, so we are very excited to um, welcome that women's soccer team onto campus. All right, so next up is our housing. Um, so here at Highland, um, all of our housing is apartment style. So you can see a photo here. Um, by apartment style, what we mean is that um, there's a living room, kitchen, and bathroom, and you only share those spaces with your other roommates. So um, we don't have any of those dorms that you might see um, that has you know, the long hallway and everyone shares a bathroom. Um, all of ours are those apartment style. Um, and you can see the different names of our residence halls here. And then on this next slide, um, we do have our different layouts. So um, you can do your own bedroom if you would like, uh, but we do have the four and six occupants um, in those bedrooms. Lots of student life activities. Um, you can see listed here, we have intramurals, activities and events. And we also have plenty of clubs and organizations for our students to participate in. Um, we also have technical programs, both one year and two year. Um, those are not located here on our main campus, um, but you can, if there's anything, again, interested here, um, please feel free to type that in your Q&A box. And then our online option, you can take these from anywhere. You do not have to be on our main campus to do this. 
A lot of our students will supplement um, if needed, um, but just know wherever you're at, um, you can take these online classes. All right, and so what is next? Um, of course, you can request information. Um, if you'd like to come and visit, we do have in-person and virtual options. And then applying to Highland, it is free. It doesn't take too long, um, but it just helps us communicate with you better. So I hope to see you all soon. And again, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to write those down in the Q&A box. Thank you so much, Taylor. Our next presenter is from Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Sorry about that, I was muted there. I am Mariah Erickson. I'm an admissions representative from Kansas City, Kansas Community College. My pronouns are she, her. And if you do have any questions during this presentation, just go ahead and drop them down in our chat here. So I'm from Kansas City, Kansas Community College, another community college in Kansas. Always great to see a couple of them up here. So we are a public urban open door comprehensive community college that's committed to excellence in education. That's a mouthful, so let's break it down. Public means that we're not a private school. That one's pretty simple. We're urban, so we are in Kansas City, Kansas. And as Kansas City residents and Missouri residents and Kansas residents, you're probably clear with Kansas City, Kansas and Kansas City, Missouri. So we're right next door to Kansas City, Missouri. And I just like to speak on this because it expresses how many opportunities you have for jobs after school, opportunities for internships, opportunities for part-time work while you are at school. So being urban is a big plus for us. We are open door, so we do have a free online application and anyone that does fill that out will be accepted. So we do believe that education is for everyone here. And then comprehensive means we have both academic programs and academic trade programs. So we'll get a little bit into that later. So we have a couple different things that you can do here with us. You can come and get your associates degree with us, which is gonna be typically around a two year program. You can get your associates in gen eds and move on to a four year university. You can get your associates in whatever degree you're interested in, stop there and go ahead and enter the workforce, or you can get your associates in a trade. So we do have a couple of our trade technical programs that do come with associates degrees, but we also have some of them that do come with technical certificates. So our programs range from four months to three and a half years. Our four months one is our nail technology program. So if you wanna learn how to do those gorgeous nails, you wanna do cosmetology, we have that program as well, as well as welding, automotive technology, collision, we have music, art, all kinds of good stuff. Our longest is going to be our three and a half year program, which is our nursing program we have here on our campus. We have a variety of student resources. So we do have an on-campus learning commons that's open to any of our locations. We have a trade location that's just down the road from our main campus. We have main campus where I'm at. And then we have our Pioneer Center, which is in Leavenworth, Kansas. All three locations are welcome to use any of these student resources. Our learning commons says exactly what you have in a four-year university. We have study rooms, master level librarians, writing centers, tutoring centers. We have our student success center, which houses our career house. So they help with anything like internships, finding work after school, um, resume work, uh, interview tips on how you should do better in your interviews. We have our counseling and advocacy center. So we have our women and gender study group comes out of there student accessibility and support services, military veteran center. We have a free wellness center for all of our students. So anyone's free to come hang out at our gym, run a couple laps if they want to. We have an intercultural center and we have student health services. So we also do have apartment style housing, pretty similar there to Highland, um, but we are in the process now of building new student housing for a upgrade. We will have an amphitheater attached to it going to have study halls in it. It's going to have patios, all kinds of good stuff. My favorite part is the hammock grove they're putting in so I can go hammock in between my meetings. If you are coming to our campus, this will be here for you fall of 22. So if you're a senior this year, we do have housing options. However, if you are a junior, this is a thing to look forward to. We do have student life on campus. We have over 40 plus organization clubs and special interest groups. My favorite to point out is our yarn club, just to express like 
how much anyone can be interested in something, they can make that into an organization or a club. We also have our gamers club, so they do esports. We have a game room on our campus to house them, which started off as Monopoly, but has since moved on to be like all different kinds of things. We got those PS4s, we got Xboxes on campus. So it's a really nice place for students to hang out. We do have a couple different athletic teams. So we do have softball, baseball, basketball, men's and women's, soccer, men's and women's, and golf and volleyball here on our campus. If you do think that you have any special talents in any of those athletics, we do offer recruitment here. So our application process is pretty painless. It's just a free application online. We do not require ACTs for anyone to attend here. However, we do encourage all people to take our AccuPlacer, which is very similar to an ACT here on our campus. It is a free test you can take. It tests you in reading, writing, and math just to make sure that you are in the right courses for you while you're here on our campus. Enrollment begins April 1st, so get excited because you can start enrolling in classes this week. However, we will accept applications all the way up to the week of classes. So if you're not sure and you wanna think about it over the summer, we'd love to have you here. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My name is Mariah Erickson and you can contact me at any of the phone number or email below. And we will put that in the chat as well. Thank you so much. And next we'll be hearing from Cowley County Community College. Hi guys, welcome to Cali College, and my name is Brandon. I'm Brandon. With... You're in presenter mode. You want to switch? There we go. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. My name is Brandon Burke. I am one of the admissions recruiters here at Cali College, and I want to welcome everyone to uh, our page. And I want to encourage everyone to definitely connect with us uh, through social media. So we're going to start off of where Cali is actually located. Uh, Cali established in 1922. Our main campus is in our Kansas City, Kansas. And we have four other locations that we serve here in the great state of Kansas. Not only do we have other locations, but we do have an online resource that allows students uh, that would like to take classes online uh, from different areas, they are available to do so as well. Reasons to choose Cali College. Well, first of all, we are a two-year institute, so this allows students to be able to have an affordable education um, at the lowest possible cost. We offer over 120 different programs of study. Not only can you get your associate's degree here, but you can also receive a certificate of study and be able to go into the workforce. Uh, our main campus, we have quite a bit of different performances. We have activities and sporting events. There is something always going on. We are a nationally recognized, fully accredited uh, school. So this is made for students to be able to not only get their associate's degree, but also move on to a university and be able to transfer all of their studies. We have a 13 to one ratio student to faculty. So that is great. Uh, our faculty get to know who you are as an individual and get to know your study habits and make those accommodations for you. We are very big with the virtual resources. Uh, this allows students to be able to go to cali.edu slash resources, be able to book an appointment, they can take a campus tour virtually, or you can 
come and take a face-to-face -face campus tour with us. Uh, we also have online dorm tours that are available for students. Not only does this uh, allow you to check out all of our dorm options, but it also allows you to go ahead and apply. Our admissions is completely free. We do not require AC ACT or SATs. Um, we do have what we call is the placement test. So this allows students to be able to take a test in reading, writing, and math, and allow students to take that at their uh, own pace. So you can also search for courses for studying, and then we also share our online view book as well. So this is just a little bit of a breakdown for the bottom line with the cost as a Kansas resident um, to an Oklahoma resident and then other U.S. state uh, residents. So you can definitely see this is based off 32 credit hours per year. So this is pretty affordable uh, for students and a lot of students will leave debt free. So with our housing, we do have, we are offering our housing contract uh, at this time for the 21-22 academic year. And so if you are interested, there is a QR code available. So you can scan that QR code and request a form. We also, like I said before, have our 3D dorm tours. So it's just like walking right into our dorms. So definitely, um, any college that you are looking at, definitely look for that housing contract and get that in as soon as possible. We are accredited with our nationally um, ranked sports. So we do have quite a bit of different athletic programs that are, are across our campus. Uh, so if that is something that you are interested in, feel free to reach out to our coaching staff and they would be happy to visit with you. And then as always, just becoming a Tiger is very uh, easy. Applying for admissions, again, is free and only takes a few minutes. Uh, you can send in your high school transcript or any other college transcripts to be able to see what classes you still need to complete. Uh, again, if you have taken the ACT or SAT score, you can submit those, but those are not required for admissions. Uh, and then we just ask that we uh, sit down with you either face to face or virtually, and we can get you enrolled for classes. Uh, here is quite a bit of our different locations and the numbers. So if you are interested, please reach out to us and we would be happy to visit with you. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Brandon. Next, we will hear from the University of Oregon. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Laura Romer, and I am a regional admissions counselor for the University of Oregon located in Arizona. I apologize about my dog barking for absolutely no reason. Not sure why he's doing that. Um, but to introduce you quickly to the geography of Oregon, the University of Oregon is located in Eugene, which is an amazing spot to be if you love the great outdoors. Eugene is located in the Willamette Valley, so it's definitely a warmer place than many other parts of Oregon, but you're an hour away from the Cascade Mountains if you're interested in getting some snow, and you're an hour away from the Pacific Ocean if you're interested in the water. So again, an amazing location for our students. Here's a great snapshot of campus and just- Laura, we're not seeing your, your screen, I'm sorry. I think there was an error in the screen share. Oh, I'm sorry. It just still looks like it's I attempting know. to share. Maybe cancel it and try again. Yeah, let me, how about now? Perfect, that looks great. Okay, there we go. Now you can see campus. Well, we are a green city, so you can definitely tell that from the number of trees and uh, amount of grass that you can see in this photo. The University of Oregon has a really big reputation, but we have just under 19,000 undergraduate students. This is a predominantly undergraduate institution, but we're a tier one research institution, which means that a ton of time and effort and money is spent on research opportunities at the university. And these are things that students can absolutely be a part of from the beginning of their time at the University of Oregon. Research is conducted in every academic unit on campus, and that's why 73% of our students are engaged in research activities. 
If you are a fan of NCAA athletics, you may have seen our teams competing in March Madness this past weekend. Unfortunately, that is the end for us this year, but this is a really spirited place. This is definitely a campus where you notice when game day is happening because everybody is dressed up. Uh, it's definitely part of the culture. So if you are interested in a school with lots of spirit, this is definitely the place. Regardless of what you're interested in studying, we have over 100 academic programs to choose from, so we've probably got something that sounds interesting, but these are our top majors. These are definitely things that attract students from all over the world. This is really, I think, why we have students from over 100 countries and all 50 states every year. And I encourage students to do some research about our programs. Again, find out about the research that's being done in each of these departments and figure out if that's something that you'd like to pursue when you're in college. So some more fast facts. We have a 16 to one student to teacher ratio. Again, research is a big component of who we are. And the Clark Honors College is something to consider if you are a student who loves to go above and beyond. You can be in any major and be a part of the Honors College, but there's also 48 majors on campus with their own departmental honors programs. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention study abroad, which is a very big deal at the university. Our students do get a liberal arts education when they're on campus, but we think the best way for a student to become a culturally competent citizen of the world is to spend time in another country. And about a quarter of our students go abroad every year. We have 300 plus established programs, but you can pretty much go wherever you'd like. So to talk about the application process, our freshman admission deadlines are pretty straightforward. The earlier you apply to the University of Oregon, the earlier you will hear back from us. And again, uh, hopefully we, we will be able to hear your decision by May 1st. There are some scholarships with separate applications, so I do recommend doing those college applications earlier wherever possible. We have a holistic admission process, so we will look at you as the whole person, looking at your GPA and how you got there, the classes you chose to take, your senior schedule, test scores you'll notice are completely optional, but we're also going to look at what you do outside of the classroom, like your activities and volunteering, and your personal statement, which is a chance for you to share something that isn't on the rest of your application. We are test optional. Again, I want to reiterate that we are test optional forever, and we have a guaranteed tuition rate for up to five years. So this locks your tuition and fees for up to five years, giving you and your family a lot of financial certainty for the future. We have a great virtual web page where you can see a great pre-recorded presentation, see a 360 degree view of campus and see a virtual campus tour. So I encourage you to visit this web page until it is safe to travel again. Thank you so much for being here today. I will put my contact information in the chat. So don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Laura. And the final presentation will be from the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Okay, well, thank you all for coming today. Thank you for having me. And before I get started, let me just say welcome to Kansas City. So my name is Jordan Davis, and I'm the admissions counselor for the state of Kansas at UMKC or the University of Missouri in Kansas City. We are the Kansas City area's largest comprehensive research institution, and we love being nestled in this metropolitan area of over 2 million people. But at UMKC, we like to say that Kansas City is your campus, but we do have a proper campus. So let's learn a little bit more about that by diving into our degree programs. So I'll just go over this briefly. At UMKC, we have over 125 degree programs, and these range from our robust liberal arts programs in the College of Arts and Sciences to our renowned Conservatory of Music, Dance, and Theater, which houses all of our music performance, um, music therapy, theory, as well as our dance and theater programs, and the second largest music composition program in the nation, to our renowned, unique six-year BAMD program, where students have the opportunity to pursue both a Bachelor of Arts degree, as well as a Doctorate of Medicine degree in a six-year time frame, as opposed to the traditional eight-year time frame. 
So here's a little bit more about UMKC by the numbers. We have just over 16,000 students split between our two different campuses. Our Volker campus, which you can see a glimpse of here as well as behind me, and our Health Sciences District campus that houses our schools of pharmacy, medicine, nursing and health studies, um, and dentistry. Again, we have over 125 majors. Our student to faculty ratio is about 15 to one, which means that you're gonna get really close access to um, the faculty that are ideally gonna be individuals who are working in the field that you hope to go into. We have over 300 student organizations ranging from Greek life and pre-professional organizations to interest organizations like rugby club or yoga club. And we are an NCAA Division I athletic school. We have over 14 Division I athletic teams and our primary sports are gonna be basketball and soccer. So a little bit more about our campus community. At UMKC, one of the things that we like to uplift is diversity in a variety of ways. So over 40% of our students are gonna be students of color. We have students from over 85 countries globally. We have multiple LGBTQIA support services and scholarships. We promote diversity in terms of age and life experience, veteran status, and we have offices and services at UMKC to allow students to feel supported no matter how they identify or who they're supporting. We have a vibrant on-campus community of over 1,200 students split between our two residence halls. And we have an honors program for students who are wanting to challenge themselves with a more rigorous academic experience. So here's a little bit of information about the admissions process. In this top left box, you can see the freshman admission criteria. This is really what we look at when we receive your materials, your high school core curriculum, your ACT or SAT score, if you provide that based on these test optional guidelines, your GPA and your class rank. In this upper right box, you can see what you need to provide to us. So an application, either ours or the Common App, the $45 application fee, which can be waived. You just have to demonstrate financial need and there are a variety of ways to do that. We'll need your transcripts and your test scores again, based off of this test optional guideline. Most of our programs are test optional as long as you have a 2.75 high school core GPA. However, I will say that I'd recommend you still try to take the ACT or SAT if at all possible. And this is just kind of general advice. While many schools are test optional for admission purposes, there are fewer schools that are test optional widely for scholarship purposes. And so ACT and SAT scores can still be very useful if you're able to take them. So this is one of my favorite things to talk about. I actually graduated from UMKC and I'm from Topeka, Kansas. And so one great thing about UMKC is that for Kansas students, no matter where you're from in Kansas, you get in-state tuition, meaning you have the opportunity to come study in this great big city that is Kansas City but to do so for no more than a Missouri resident is going to pay. Our main campus is located right across the street from the Country Club Plaza. You can see that right about there. And so it's a great place to study and make connections while you're an undergraduate student. You can see that tuition rate here, and this is a yearly rate, and this is not considering any scholarships you may be um, awarded. Like I said, we do have a vibrant on-campus community. We have two residence halls. Both are going to be suite style, meaning it's two roommates, two other roommates, and then an adjoining bathroom. Um, and both of our residence halls were constructed um, in 2004 or later. So they're nice and updated. Um, you can see images of those in these three boxes and an image of our on-campus apartment complex here. And this is located on our um, Hospital Hill one other thing about UMKC housing is that we recognize that on-campus housing is not going to be for every student. And so we don't have a residency requirement, meaning you can live on campus up to four years if you choose, but if you want to find an off-campus housing or commute from your first year, you can absolutely do that. There are a variety of ways that you can visit and connect with UMKC, both in person and virtual, depending on comfortability and your um, availability. We have in-person campus visits with a presentation from an admissions counselor like myself, as well as campus tour onlys. And we have virtual visit options. We have ways to connect with specific academic units like our six-year BAMD program or our College of Arts and Sciences. And we have a live chat running on our admissions website every day from nine to five, every weekday, I should say. 
So finally, here are some great ways to connect with us. And you'll see in the background of this slide our Health Sciences District campus close to downtown Kansas City. You can give us a phone call here. Um, or you can reach out to us at admissions at umkc.edu. I will also put my personal contact information in the chat immediately um, after this. So thank you so much for having me and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much, Jordan. And now I'd like to invite um, all of the, the panelists if they would rejoin us. Um, we have just a couple of minutes left. So um, perhaps I could ask each of you in turn um, in about you know 20 to 30 seconds, tell us your just an interesting or fun fact about your school. It could be um, a, a cool course, a famous alum, your favorite campus tradition, really anything, um, anything that's interesting that you'd like to share. So let's start with Missouri University of Science and Technology. Uh, all right. I think uh, one of the most interesting things that I like about our campus is our design teams. My favorite one is our Mars rover team. Uh, last two years ago, um, they built their rover and they placed first internationally. Um, so ranked number one in the world for their, their rover design. Um, and it's entirely student led, um, student built, student designed. Uh, and it's really cool to see. Super cool. Thanks. Highland Community College. Um, so we are the Scotties, <clears throat> and so um, if this is a favorite tradition, I guess, of our school, so our incoming freshmen have orientation, they move in early, um, and they do a walk through campus um, that first day that they're here, um, and then when we they graduate, they are led the same path through campus um, to graduation by bagpipes, so I've always thought that was a really neat tradition, how they start is also how they end. Very cool. Kansas City, Kansas Community College. That's so cool to hear about the bagpipes. Um, we pride ourselves in our technical programs here. We think they're super amazing. So we have a variety like construction, automotive, and nail technology. And I think one of the most special things about our campus is seeing those programs actually working in real time. So at our Pioneer Center, our construction area wanted to have a bigger room for their projects. So they just decided to build it themselves as part of their class project. The professor was like, that's a great way for you guys to actually put up walls is to actually put up some walls that we're going to have to use. So you'll see things like walls being built by our students and stuff for practice and then torn back down. You'll see our nail technology students helping other students get their nails done and our auto people working on their cars. So it's just really nice to see all those things actually happening in real time. Cool. Thanks. Cowley College. I would have to say our criminal justice program that we have here on campus, not only are we, we house our criminal justice uh, students in one of the oldest buildings, um, not only on campus, but in our Kansas City, Kansas, uh, but we also get to train with the Kansas SWAT team. So it's really neat to see these students um, interacting so they get real scenario one on one um, opportunities. So really, really a neat opportunity for students that go into that field. Cool. Thanks, Brandon. The University of Oregon. Yes, a fun fact about the University of Oregon is that, and this is probably something a lot of people know, but the founder of Nike, Phil Knight, is an alumnus of the U of O, and uh, he's affectionately referred to around campus as Uncle Phil. And Phil and Penny, his wife, recently donated a significant portion of money to the university to build a biomedical research facility on campus called the Knight Campus for Accelerating Scientific Impact. The facility just opened a few months ago and we're still building on some additions to it, but there is already some really exciting biomedical research being done in and around that facility. And as I mentioned before, undergraduate students absolutely can be a part of research. So if you are interested in the future of prosthetics or genetic sequencing, we have all of that happening on campus in this beautiful new facility. And uh, more to come, both physically in the building uh, and all of the exciting research that will come out of it over the next few years. Thanks, Laura. And last, University of Missouri, Kansas City. Yeah, so one really cool thing about UMKC is that this is kind of a two part. So our health sciences district campus is one of only 18 areas in the nation that has public schools of medicine, pharmacy, dentistry, nursing, 
a children's hospital and an adult acute care hospital on one campus, but we're also the only um, district in the country that also has um, a health department, a medical examiner, and a mental health center in that same district. So it's a really unique space to um, study and learn as a health student. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. And, um, and thank you to all of our panelists. It's always great to learn about uh, so many different colleges and universities. Really appreciate you spending time sharing with us all today. And thank you to all of you for joining us. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We really appreciate the feedback that you can provide. Also, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted as part of this college fair series. So be sure to sign up for some additional ones. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well um, as all the other sessions recordings at strivescan.com slash Kansas. Um, thank you, students, parents, counselors. Thank you, panelists. Everyone have a great day. Bye-bye.